All right, guys, today we're gonna be doing something fun, maybe a little bit archaic, but still pretty cool. And that is that I'm going to be talking about my end of the world um, zombie apocalypse, kind of just ultimate uh, setup for an apocalyptic event, whether it's zombies or not, but especially zombies, I feel like this would be my go-to like loadout or setup, at least for weapons, you know. We we tend to like to talk about weapons more than you know, like other preparations. Obviously you wanna have your food, you wanna have you know your knives, you wanna have all the basic essentials, of course, you wanna have your gas masks, armor, all that kind of fun jazz. But what we really care about talking about, and I think as men especially, we enjoy, you know, um, debating all of the, you know, hypotheticals of it, if you will, that is, what well, we're gonna be talking about for weapons. I think like that's where the men like to debate their hypotheticals. And I think I have a pretty cool, pretty interesting setup here overall. So before we get into it, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and definitely check out some other videos if you like this one especially. So first off, for those, I think I've already kind of panned down and kind of shown you guys the setup. It's hard to fit everything, and I really realistically can't fit this whole setup on camera entirely, but here is the main good portion of the bow. And I think that we're gonna start off with the bow itself. So first off, I think that the bow, a traditional bow, something like a recurve, would honestly be a really, really cool weapon to have, especially because something like this is going to be so quiet, so easy to use, and honestly very reusable. Whether we're talking about hunting or defending yourself, I think something like a bow is gonna be really hard to go wrong with. And in my opinion too, I think at least initially, you know, there might be some chaos and turmoil, but I think within reason, especially if it's any type of like apocalyptic event, I think a lot of what's gonna come back to keeping people alive and making people survivors is being able to provide and get you know, long-term food, provisions, and rations. And so I think that that's realistically, the biggest pro to having something like a bow is it's highly reusable and you can use it to effectively hunt, um, especially something like this. This is a 45, 45 pounder and uh, it will definitely take a good amount of animals um, for sure so anyways this is the bow this one in particular for those curious because i love talking about this thing i'm probably gonna do a video once i have this thing fully decked out but this in particular is the ben pearson 709 hunter this is a traditional vintage bow and um, it's not super super old school but i believe it's from like the 70s mid 70s maybe um I want to say 70s, I don't think it's from the 60s, but right around that, maybe 80s. But overall, it's a pretty pretty old vintage bow, and uh, it is pretty darn cool. So I know that my people that were born in the 70s and 80s definitely just felt being called vintage, but what I mean is traditionally, like this is specifically a vintage bow. Like, if you go on eBay and look up vintage bows, you will find bows like this. Maybe not this one in particular, but you know, like bows of the same period. So people from the 80s, you're not vintage, but these are true fully vintage bows. So anyways, this guy is really cool. And what I love about the 709 Hunter from Ben Pearson is a few things. One, for me, in my opinion, this is a bow that I shoot extremely well. This is actually my second one because my first one tragically had some limb delamination up towards one of the tips. I want to say it was the bottom tip. And so I had to unfortunately scrap that bow. However, I did find this one and this one is in even better condition than my last one. But that being said, um, I shoot these bows extremely naturally and extremely well. So that's the first and biggest reason why I like the 709 Hunter. And the second kind of reason to build on that, as you guys can kind of see here with the handle in particular, hopefully. You guys can see that it's very well contoured, very well rounded, and it has, if you guys are familiar with like match pistols, if you guys are familiar with like match pistols and stuff, you'll know, or I should say target pistols, like, um, you know, Olympic target pistols, you'll probably be very familiar with the kind of grip on this guy. It is very reminiscent of target pistols. And so what that means is there's just a lot of flare to the palm and a really good shelf for your thumb to rest on, as you guys can see there. And so that just means that it has an incredibly comfortable grip. This is one of the most comfortable bows, legitimately like new or old compound or traditional 
that I've ever held and got the privilege to experience. And so that is one of the big things I love about it. And then lastly is this really big zebra wood riser. So the riser, for those who don't know about bows, your riser is this you know whole portion of where your grip is, where your arrow knocks and kind of just rests. And so like this whole area right here is your riser. So on um, 709 Hunters, uh, they were all made out of zebra wood and it's like two parts of zebra wood laminated together, but they are big and they are very, very beautiful. As you can see, in my opinion, this is one of like the downright most beautiful traditional vintage bows. And in my opinion, like this thing, especially for some of the prices that these can go for, like, even on the high end of this thing being like $300, this is still, in my opinion, like this thing is better than the modern traditional bows that you can go out and buy today. Cause you can go out there and buy like Samick Sages. And um, I think I wanna say Cabela's makes like a traditional takedown bow and stuff like that. And so you can go out there and you can buy those for similar prices to this. But this, I mean, like they have nothing on this. They, the risers on like Samick Sages and stuff, they're made out of like beech wood and just like not bad materials, but like this is zebra wood. It is beautiful like you're not going to find this kind of um this kind of like setup anywhere today like brand new so very beautiful and that's kind of my miniature rant on the very beautiful 709 hunter by ben pearson it's a fantastic bow absolutely love it and that's for those reasons that is why it would be one of my go-tos for the apocalypse and end of the world. And like I said, I think also a bow would make a lot of sense for long-term hunting. And once again, if you have to go into a defensive stance, the bow is pretty darn comp competent because it is very quiet, very effective. And one of the cool things about it heaven forbid, is it won't do much against hard armor, but if you find that someone's wearing soft armor, if you shoot a broadhead, it's going to cut straight through a Kevlar vest. Like a lot of people don't know, but you know, your bows and stuff when it comes to soft armor are actually going to be better than bullets. Now, once again, if you have a fast enough bullet, that's a little bit different, but when it comes down to it, if you want to silently take out someone who's wearing, you know, th level 3A, you know, um, Kevlar vests and stuff, a bow with a broad head on it will easily slice right through Kevlar vests. It does not matter. So keep that in mind, take that for what it's worth. So anyways, I think that the bow is very venerable. Obviously it's not going to go toe to toe with like a belt fed machine gun, but it is very competent in and of itself. All right, next one up. And of course, once again, I'm sure as many people have been looking, I think what would really, especially in something like a zombie apocalypse, what would really complement a bow is a really competent handgun. And that is, at least in my opinion, what I've chosen here. This is a Springfield Prodigy. And the reason why I like the Springfield Prodigy is when I was thinking about like, what type of firearm do I want to have to complement a bow? Because bows, as I just mentioned, you know, a bow is not going to be the best solution for every problem. Great for hunting, great for silently taking things down, great for the reusability of the arrows, and there are a handful of other attributes to the bow. However, speed, capacity, and you know, fighting other armed assailants is probably not the best thing when it comes to the bow. If you want, unless you can, like I said, somehow silently take them out or, you know, quietly dispatch them, the bow is not your best friend. So for me, what I wanted to choose was a handgun that there's kind of this notion and this, um, not necessarily successful, but this kind of, you know, proposed idea of a fighting handgun. And what that means is a handgun that you can use to not replace a mainline rifle, like a battle rifle or something, but something that you can genuinely in close quarters actually fight with. So that means actually, you know, taking the fight to people and not just a lot of people consider, you know, the handgun to be a self-defense or a defensive tool as a whole. So that means you're not going to push in, you're not gonna lead the charge with a handgun. You're going to defend yourself and push back with a handgun. However, over the course of the years, Things like the Mark 23 from H&K were built as handguns that once again in close quarter situations could actually become aggressor tools that you could use to push 
or lead the charge. Once again, not pushing out to distance, but to actually like make a push. And so for me, anyways, long story short, the prodigy for me is what kind of made the deal for me or sealed the deal for me. And that is partly because it is a really well, like it is designed in my opinion to be a very capable, competent fighting type handgun. Now you can't necessarily, at least out of box, throw compensators or suppressors on there. But I think when it comes to pushing forward, you know, actually like aggressor kind of fighting with a handgun, once again, suppressors are going to maybe help you in the first few moments of conflict, but once things start to heat up, you're going to be compromised anyways. So having a suppressor really doesn't change the tides of that type of environment that much. Compensators would be helpful, but it's a nine mil handgun and this literally has a steel, you know, like upper frame and steel slide, steel barrel. So it's pretty, it's not the lightest handgun. So recoil isn't my biggest concern. My biggest concerns when it comes to my biggest concerns when it comes to a fighting pistol are, can you control it? Does it have good capacity? And can you like attach things to it to aid you in fighting? So you have a really good rail, you can throw lights, lasers, you can throw lights, lasers on here. You can throw um, large capacity magazines, or I would say normal capacity magazines, but as you can see, like this is a 20 round magazine. You can get 26 round magazines and what's in it stock is a 17 round magazine. So you have very good control there uh, or you have very good capacity there. And once again, as I mentioned, you know, the upper frame and the whole upper of the handgun itself is all steel. It is a very, at least I don't want to say it's a very heavy handgun because I don't really think it is, but it is not light. It is not insignificant, but it feels good in the hand. And so for me, those are some of the big things, of course, red dot um, compatible, as you can see, currently has a red dot sight on it. So all of those are the biggest reasons why this, in my opinion, would make a good fighting handgun that if you have to push forward, like I said, um, especially something like a bow is obviously not going to be good if you have to go into a house or do room clearing. So having something that if you have to go close quarters that you can push with and that you can you know, properly use to actually make advances against potential armed assailants is going to be valuable. So I would say something like the Springfield Prodigy would be a solid option. Of course, things like the 2011 Staccatos would be good. Um, there's plenty of other handguns. Even Glocks would be just fine for this task. I think like any full-sized handgun that has a good capacity, even like the Beretta M9 A3s, I want to say, or A4s. I think the A4s um, or like the newer versions and they have a larger capacity, but I will say the kind of caution to the Berettas is they are or have been for a while kind of limited to like the, the base or stock capacity. It's pretty similar to everything else, 17 rounds of nine mil, but with, like I said, the Prodigy Staccatos, you can get up to 26 round magazines that carry pretty competently. Like you can of course always get larger and larger magazines, but do they work or do they actually like um, carry competently? And so that's where like, I like the 20 round magazines of the Prodigy because this is still a very usable package, but yeah, also, you know, 20 plus one gives you a very good capacity of actually being able to fight with a pistol. So anyways, you know, with Glocks, you probably want to trend towards the larger full-sized or what I consider like full-sized plus. So things like the Glock 40 or, you know, like larger handguns that have, you know, five plus inches of barrel would be decent as well. So I think that those are also good options for a fighting handgun. I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, the Prodigy is the way to go. It's just in my setup and in my mindset. And of course, like I said, this is all hypothetical, um, you know, just for the fun of it really is why we're talking about this stuff. But I think something like the Prodigy would make a good fighting handgun on top of balancing out a bow. Because like I said, there are distinct disadvantages to having a traditional bow or even like a compound bow, like either way. In fact, a traditional bow is gonna have faster follow-up shots than a compound bow, but you know, um, at the end of the day, this is all hypothetical. This is all just kind of for the fun of it. Definitely let me know what you guys would have in your setup. And realistically, if the world truly came to the end, would I use a bow? I think honestly, the bow would be pretty high up on my list, but I definitely have some other better options as well, as far as rifles and stuff that would go well in an apocalypse as well. 
So I might end up choosing those in in balance or in tandem with a bow, but I do think, to be completely honest, that bows do have a really good, you know, advantage or use in apocalypses, especially in something like a zombie apocalypse where you're trying to not alert hordes of enemy potential, you know, threats that want to hurt you. You know, a bow is a really good way of dispatching people. Once again, too, also soft armor is completely susceptible to any type of arrow. I did say, you know, broadheads are the best and that's true, but especially even field tips are going to absolutely rip right through Kevlar vests. So keep that in mind, take that for what it's worth. And once again, like I said, this video isn't, um, you know, this video is just for hypothetical fun and that's really the point of it. I thought it'd be a fun video and a nice kind of mix up from some of my more EDC and like real life based practical things. This is all impractical and just for the fun of it. Um, I just like talking about equipment and weapons and firearms and tools for every type of situation. And so anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.